Okay, uh, here I am back in the garage with my 2011 uh, hunk of junk Dodge Durango RT. Um, I bought it used. I've had it just about a year. I think about a year, maybe a year and a month at the longest I've had it. And uh, so far, I've um, replaced the camshaft with all the lifters in it. Um, had a leaky radiator, which a uh, Chrysler dealer wanted to charge me $600 for it. They had a part put in the cam in it and uh, basically said uh, the radiator was leaking. They sent me a picture of it. I verified the air was leaking. So uh, they wanted $600. $500 for the Mopar radiator and $100 for install, which I kind of asked them why. Number one, why do I want a Mopar radiator back in it? Because obviously they leak. Uh, secondly, why are you going to charge me $100 to install a radiator that you already take it out to get the cam out and you got to put it back in anyway? So. I picked up a radiator at my one of my favorite auto parts store, that's O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I picked up a radiator for two hundred dollars, and they they stuck it in when they put the car uh, the truck back together. And they didn't charge me anything, so that worked out all right. Uh, and now uh, I've got a, a water pump gone bad, and also have a leaky exhaust manifold a gasket, which more than likely is the result of broken bolts. And the exhaust manifold, which is pretty common with these, and actually a lot of lot of lot of vehicles out there have the same issue because they have the aluminum heads and the cast iron uh, manifold, and the, the the heat expansion rate is different on the two because they're two different metals, and so it's a pretty common problem. But nevertheless, it's still a problem. I'm gonna start this engine up and let you hear this this water pump because I've never heard water pumps make this kind of noise before. Normally, water pumps when they go bad, they seem like they just start leaking or you just start overheating and you have issues like that. This thing doesn't overheat, doesn't leak any, but it's making a really weird noise and that's, uh, de it's been determined that it's the water pump, so I'm gonna have to change that. So uh, uh, let me get this thing started up and see if, uh, grab this camera, see if, it, see if you can actually hear, hear all the noise this thing's making. All right, well that's a, that's a golf manifold you can hear there. Quiet down a little bit. You hear that rattling noise. I don't know if you can hear that or not. You can hear that rattling noise. Coming from the water pump. Kind of odd, never, never heard a water pump made that kind of noise before, but uh, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to rip this thing apart and stick a water pump in it. All right, there's a water pump right there. It doesn't seem to be too awful bad to get to. I pulled the serpentine belt off of it and uh, restarted the engine just to verify that that's where the noise was coming from, and the noise disappeared. So that water pump, I mean, it doesn't feel bad, but it's definitely making a noise when the engine runs, and, and I got a I got a trip coming up soon here, uh, Boss Hoss Rally. I'm gonna tow my motorcycle down, uh, meet a bunch of people with Boss Hoss motorcycle is gonna be fun. And I can't risk taking this down there and having that water pump go out on, on the road. So it's, a, it's about a four or five hour journey. But anyway, there it is. I'm gonna get back at it. Well, I guess first thing first, I got a big drain pan underneath there. There's a pit cock down there, <clears throat> you can see. Got some coolant run out of it. Try to get a better angle down there. Uh, took the radiator cap off. Loosen it up just so there's some air in there. So now we'll wait an hour probably for it to drain all out before we start taking this off. I don't want to make a big mess in my garage for it. Okay, you got a little tube here sticking out of it. It's just a. Um, 10 millimeter bolt holds in right there. Take the 10 millimeter bolt out, that tube pops right out of there. Pretty simple. The fluid's drained out. Next, I'm going to remove this hose here. And um, then there's a bottom radiator hose. We're going to have to get to down there and get that removed. And then uh, basically just take the rest of these bolts out. Um, it should come right out of there. 
uh, we'll see. Uh, I got the top radiator hose removed. Um, I picked up a new thermostat because I think any time you get tearing something like that, you might as well do that. Uh, next, before you take this water pump loose, remove the, uh, the idler pulley and, and the tensioner pulley. And by removing these, um, you'll get a little bit more clearance of that bottom hose for sure. And uh, you, you don't want to have to try to wrestle those off that that, uh, that water pump once you once you get that out. Uh, much easier, like why it's still in the in the truck for sure. So we'll go ahead and get that stuff off. And uh, another little word of advice: when you remove this temperature sensor, you try to put a wrench on there. It's plastic. You're probably going to destroy it. Um, I would suggest using a deep well six point socket. Um, I used a three quarter. I just grabbed, a, I believe it's actually probably a 19 millimeter, but a three quarter actually worked pretty well. And you want to do that and because this, it'd be real gentle loosen that thing up because it's plastic and it will break easily. And I'm probably going to have to replace this one just because you can see how them threads just get wrecked coming out of there. So I suggest putting a, putting a new temperature sensor in there. Uh, I got the lower radiator hose out. So now it's basically just a, uh, uh, remove the bolt hole the water pump on and, and that thing should just come right off. It's really not all that difficult uh, So let's get back at it All right, got the bolts out. There's a uh, there's ten bolts um, various lengths All around the outside edge of that water pump and they're all they're gonna take a 13 millimeter socket And then there, you got one long one right in the middle That uh you will take out, and I believe that was a 15 millimeter. So now basically um, I should be able to take a rubber mallet and tap on that water pump a few times and it should uh, pop right off there. So we'll get a hammer and see. All right, there you have it. Uh, one water pump removed, and there it is. And uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely bad. I mean, if you can see that, it, yeah, it's, the bearing in there is shot. That, that thing shouldn't wiggle like that. So that's where my noise was coming from. Yeah, it's funny, they don't, they don't leak like they used to. They, they, they doesn't even have a weep hole in the bottom like the old school pumps. But all right, now to get this all cleaned up and uh, um, get it back together. All right, there's a side-by-side -side of the two water pumps. It's just a uh, rubber gasket that sits down in a, a little groove there. And what I do is uh, I put a real thin coat of... Uh, grease all the way around both sides of that gasket before I set it down into that water pump. Um, it, just, it just helps it seal a lot better. I uh, got everything cleaned up over here. Let's see. Got my, mating, my surface all clean. I put a little bit of grease uh, around this overing here too just to help it slide in and seal up a little better. So uh, I guess uh, next step is to get this water pump put back in there. And another little quick tip, when you go to put this new water pump back in, I found it's easiest just to line it up, stick this big long bolt that has a nut on it uh, back into the center first. And then that allows you, I mean, then you can line up all the rest of them. Instead of fighting, trying to get bolts around the outside edge, I found it was a lot easier to just stick the one in the middle, it holds the pump up there. And then uh, now you can uh, line all the rest of them up uh, one at a time. One other thing I would suggest when you go to put all the remainder bolts in, um, I put them all in, I just snug them all uh, pretty much finger tight, and then I start tightening them in a crisscross. It means I start at the top, go to the bottom, come back over to this other side, top to the bottom, then I go back over here to the top, back to the bottom, and I go crisscross like that so I get them all snugged up pretty good all the way around. Don't forget the center one. And then I go back around after they're snugged up, or, you know, pretty snug. Then I go back and just tighten them all, do them all over again. And at the very end, if you want to make sure that you got them all tight, basically just start at one. You know, there's 10 bolts around the outside edge. You know, tighten this center one up and then just go around the whole outside edge. Count them as you go around. That way you got, you, you know when you're done, you, you counted 10 bolts, you got all 10 of them tight. Um, so now it's uh, basically, it's self-explanatory from here. Uh, just put it back together in reverse, you took it apart. Start with that lower radiator hose first, then uh, toss your pulleys in and, and so on, and that should be about it. One more item you might not might want to pay attention to is where that eyelid pulley goes, if you see that little hole in the corner here, there's a little hole right there, and that's there for a purpose. So on this eyelid pulley, there's a little knob sticking out. So that's gonna go in that hole. 
if you don't, if you don't line it up in that hole, and you got to put your belt back on, you got to take it all back apart and everything, and get that lined up right because your belt tension won't work correctly. So don't forget to uh, line that up in that hole before you put that either pull, or that tensioner pulley on. Something else you want to might take note of before you start taking this thing apart is that serpentine belt. You might want to take some pictures of that because. There's nowhere underneath this hood that it shows a picture of how that belt is routed. And also, take that top radiator hose off first, move it up out of the way like I got here. Uh, that way you got good access in there. It's really not that hard to get to at all once you get that radiator hose out of the way. But yeah, take pictures of it. If not, yeah, sometimes you can be scratching your head forever. Okay, well there it is, uh, one new water pump installed. This is not that bad of a job on these, uh, fortunately enough. Um, I did contact the dealership on this. They wanted over $500 to replace that water pump. Um, I picked it up at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I paid $92 for the water pump itself. Um, I can't remember what I paid for the thermostat. I just figured while I, was, while I had it apart, I might as well put a thermostat in it. And then the temperature sensor, uh, the one I picked up is 10 times better than the plastic when it came out. This has got good brass threads on it and stuff like that. I don't ever feel like I'm gonna to have to ever take it out again, but if something happens and I do, it'll be reusable anyway, but it was $28, so it was a couple. So all in all, I got, you know, maybe 130, 100, no, about $150, I guess, worth of parts in it. And like I say, they, the dealership wanted over $500 to replace that water pump. But with a, with a Mopar water pump, which, I had a Mopar in it to start with it and it went bad. So why would I want a Mopar pump put back in it? Same thing with the radiator, but um, anyway, that's it. That's not that bad a job if you want to tackle it yourself. Um, I'm gonna take this water pump and I'm gonna stick it over with uh, my collection of parts I've got off this thing so far. And, uh, uh, I'll show you a little picture of that too. All right, here's my collection of parts. Like I said, this is a 2011. I bought it used. I've had it one year now, one year. So there's the cam that came out of it with the, with the lifter that ruined that cam. And here's the radiator that the Chrysler wanted, uh, they wanted $500 to, for a replacement radiator period and they wanted another $100 to put it in. I picked up one for a little bit over $200. And again, this is a Mopar radiator. They said the radiator itself is $500. Why do I want to put a $500 radiator in there that's doing a leak because this is a Mopar radiator here that's stock. And it leaked. Then, of course, last but not least, is the water pump. And it just is definitely bad, no doubt about that. That thing just wiggles around, but uh, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. So, that's 2011 Durango. That's how many parts I put on it so far. So, um, this truck's for sale. If anybody wants it, it's got a lot of new parts on it. Just let me know. So, that's it. That's a wrap. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, any questions? Leave it in the comments section. I'll, I try to get back to everybody. The comments uh, might take a little time because I procrastinate sometimes. But uh, only left to do now is put some coolant in this. I'm going to roll it outside, um, hose it down a little bit in the front where I got a little coolant spilt in there. That's inevitable. It's going to happen. And I got to stick the pan back up underneath the front, which is no big deal. But that's it. That's it. One new water pump. Hope, hope nothing else goes, but it's a pretty bad deal. Anyway, thanks for watching.